watching the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and now, here's your host, Data Pioneer. Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and uh, today is the 3rd of June, 2021, uh, Thursday. Hope everybody's doing well out there. What do we got on the cards today for the Linux Unix Tech Channel? Well, it's been about a month since I did a video, and my last several videos have been uh, reviews of distributions of Linux, so I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. I thought I would uh, take a look at a client, email client, that I have started using and I really like, and it's called MailSpring, and uh, it's available from GitHub, and we'll take a look at that. Um, but I don't use MailSpring uh, as a daily driver yet um, because I do have a Proton Mail account. If I go out here to the web and go over to Proton Mail, and here it is. Uh, Proton Mail is an email uh, application that's end to end encrypted. I've had it for many, many years now. Uh, when it first started up, uh, I can't even remember. I think it was probably 2014 when I opened the account. Um, but if I click on, uh, well, I have to get in. RoboForm is what I use to log into it. So give me a moment. RoboForm, by the way, is a great uh, password manager. And let's get back in here and go back up to Proton Mail. And now I can get into Proton Mail. I have a very secure password on this account. I can never remember it. It's about 20 characters long. So if I get into Proton Mail, and this is this this video is not about Proton Mail, but I wanted to show you I do have a Proton Mail account. I'll be interacting with MailSpring using this account, so I wanted to bring it up. All right, so now that I've got uh, that open, uh, let's go out to Foundry 376, which is the uh, GitHub site for MailSpring. This is how you get MailSpring. Uh, it is on the Foundry 376 uh account for GitHub. So it's Foundry 376 MailSpring. I'll put a link to this in the video down below uh, the video uh, in the show notes um, so you have it. But you can go out here and get the code. You can clone the repository uh, for GitHub by clicking this button here or download the zip and get it that way. There's several other ways of getting it. Now MailSpring is a mail client. It's based on a previous uh, mail client is now defunct but it's been resurrected uh, it is well supported uh, so if you think that MailSpring is going to go away soon that's not the case MailSpring is here to stay I believe and and so it is a cross-platform um, application for mail uh, it is a Thunderbird replacement as I mentioned and it is available for Windows Mac OS and for Linux now I don't use Windows uh, and I do not use Mac OS, but I do certainly use Linux, have been for years, many, many years, since roughly 1994. And so the ways to get uh, MailSpring here, uh, there are different ways of getting it. You can get it through flat packs, you can get it through um, a Debian package, and so, you know, a .deb file. If you're running Ubuntu or if you're running uh, Debian Linux, you can get it that way. Or you can also get it uh, if you're running uh, Fedora or you're running Alma Linux now, which is the replacement for CentOS. You can get it through an RPM package as well. And I'll put links to all of those down below the video so that you have those available. But the way I get it, get it and the way I got it and set it up was through something called a Snap package. Um, if you haven't used Snap, you might want to take a look at Snap because uh, it's a great way of getting packages, uh, especially packages that don't necessarily come with the distribution that you have. I'm using Farron OS Linux as my daily driver Linux on my tower PC, and um, if there are packages that are not available, uh, you know, as Debian or .deb files or uh, even tar gzip files or something like that, uh, I can often get them through uh, Snap packages. And the way to get Snap, let me go out here to my terminal, pull up the terminal, and um, 
Here's the terminal, and so let's uh, look at this. So let's say uh, which snap, and I already have it installed at user bin snap. But if you don't have it installed, you can do a, if you're running Ubuntu or Debian, you can do a sudo uh, apt install snap to get snap packages. And you can see here it uh, says it's snap is already installed. It's the latest version, uh, 2013, 11, 29, 9. So I don't need to install Snap here, all right? But I have several Snaps that I've already installed. And to install an application using Snap, you would do a Snap install and then the package name, all right? And the way to um, the way to find out what you have installed in Snap is to run the command Snap list. And you can see that I have several snap packages installed on my system and one of them is MailSpring. So that's the way I got it. I installed um, I installed MailSpring via the snap and so uh, it is currently at version 1.9.1 .1. it's revision 505 it is the latest stable version for MailSpring and it is uh, available through the publisher Foundry 376 okay all right, so let's clear the terminal, clean that up, and let's go back out to um, the web here. And so this is uh, how you would get it. You can also download the source if you want to do it that way. Uh, but another website here is called uh, community.getmailspring.com. And right now they're looking for feedback from uh, the community. And uh, you can vote here. So it says, please vote. So read this uh, for community feedback, and there's some information down below here on MailSpring as well from the developers, and they're looking for support from the community, um, and you can vote by clicking on the Please Vote here, and so they're asking for uh, community support for voting, and it says, that, would you be willing to use fresh beta releases of MailSpring as your regular email client and to help us get new releases? and catch bugs more quickly. You can vote whether you would be willing to do so or not. And uh, I think they would uh, fully appreciate your support there uh, in this project. All right. And it is a well-supported project. So it's not, like I said, it's not going to go away anytime soon uh, from my reckoning. All right. So get, let's get back out here. Now, once I have the uh, MailSpring installed as a snap package, that puts it in the menu list. And I have the whisker menu here, and so what I can do is click on the start button and click on uh, mail, M for MailSpring. And that brings up MailSpring here as the one of the menu items. And I can click that, and that's going to put a button down here on the uh, panel. But more importantly, it's going to eventually produce a uh, button out here, or it should, uh, put a put a button out here on the uh, there it is here uh, in this area of the panel as well so that is it, stay resident in the system so all you have to do is click this button to get open an inbox um, new message uh, preferences or quit MailSpring all right so I'm open right now into MailSpring and this is what it looks like so I'm going to bring up I've got a new email and I've got two accounts set up in MailSpring right now uh, I've got Dan Calloway at gmail.com and I've got Dan Calloway at iCloud.com. So I'll, I have both of those accounts set up. Now, one of the things that MailSpring is good for is it's, it has the unified inbox. If I click on Control and 1, brings up the uh, both accounts showing in the uh, interface here. If I do a Control 2, it drops off the uh, unified mailbox and shows you just the account gmail.com okay to separate that out and if I do a control 3 it brings up the third account that I have which is the Dan Calloway at iCloud.com I've got 50 gigabytes of iCloud space out there in my ap Apple iCloud account alright and so let's go back to uh, control 1 and bring up the unified account now you can click on Gmail to bring up Gmail only. You can click on iCloud to bring up iCloud only here. Um, and if you click on one of the emails that comes in, and this is an IMAP account, 
All right, so it's IMAP4. And if you click on the Linux Foundation, it brings, it pops up the uh, preview here on the right-hand side. It's very nice. And so you can read your email here in the pane, in this preview pane. And then you can work with it via uh, these things across the top here. So you have, you can archive that mail. You can mark this as spam. You can uh, move to trash. You can uh, star the uh, email so that you can have it under the starred accounts here. All right. Uh, you can, uh, let's go back to Linux Foundation email. You can uh, also mark it as unread. You can mark it as, uh, move the folder rather. You can apply a label to this particular uh, email. You can uh, snooze the email. What snooze does, if you're reading an email, you want to come back to it later, but you don't want to deal with it you, right now, and you don't, don't want to leave it in your inbox, to clutter up your inbox, you can snooze it, and you by clicking snooze here, you can tell it that you want to come back to this email later today or tonight or tomorrow or this weekend or next week or next month, or you can put in a specific time like next Monday at 2 p.m. So you can put in like next Wednesday at uh, 3 p.m. Okay, and then hit the enter key, and that will. Uh, hold that email in its uh, uh, resident in the program uh, off the inbox so you don't see it uh, in the cloud and um, and that email will come back and will re represent itself in your inbox on Wednesday June the 9th at 3 p.m. which I really like that feature okay um, so it keeps it keeps uh, your inbox uncluttered you can share your email with somebody else, and you can show the sidebar, all right, or not show it. All right, so here's the sidebar. This tells you a little bit about the email itself, gives you some more information about that particular email. Let's go back out and hide the, uh, the uh, sidebar here uh, rather than showing it. Okay, so how do you open up a new account? Um, so here we can click on File, and we can Add Account. And that brings up the account interface. And uh, you can connect to an email account here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this for right now and get that out of the way. And I'll bring it up later. And so you can connect an email account. You can connect to your Gmail or your G Suite account. You can connect to Yahoo Mail. You can connect to iCloud, which is what I did for my iCloud account. GMX, Office 365, Outlook.com or Hotmail or Fastmail, or Yandex, all right? Uh, if you don't have any of those and you want to connect another account, for instance, I have a uh, Charter.net mail account through Spectrum, which is my Internet service provider, you can come down here to this IMAP SMTP button, and you can click it, and it adds up, uh, it brings up, rather, a dialog box for adding your IMAP account. Okay, well, um, MailSpring thinks that my email address is dancalloway at charter.net, and that's probably because uh, that's the prefix that I've used for my previous emails. It is not my email address at Charter. If I go out on the web and uh, take a look at it, it's dlcalloway at charter.net. This is my mail account here. And if I go out to the Spectrum email server settings... And take a look at the settings. It says that my username is my full Spectrum email address, which I know to be dlcalloway at charter.net. My password is my Spectrum email password, and I know what that is. It says that I need to have SSL turned on and that uh, the protocol is IMAP uh, and that the port that I should be using and pointing it to is port 993, which is for the SSL secure IMAP accounts. It also says that I need to be using port 587 for SMTP and that it requires authentication as well. So that needs to be checked, yes, uh, or checked uh, in the box next to it. Now, the servers that it needs to point to for my account, since it is a charter.net account, the incoming server is mobile.charter.net and the outgoing is mobile.charter.net. So if I go back out here to this interface for the IMAP account uh, installation, you can see that uh, 
I have Dan Calloway here. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that with DL Calloway at charter.net. I put in the password, so that's correct. If I click continue, it says I've successfully connected my account. Uh, so it found all the other connections that I needed. That's great. And so now that I have my charter.net account set up, I can click on it, and I'm on it now. And if I go to like the top email here and click that, it brings that email up so I can read it in the preview pane as well. All right, and so um, that was very easy to set up, by the way. Uh, probably the easiest uh, email interface for setup that I've seen. Uh, I've had I've set this up in Thunderbird, and it uh, it didn't set up quite as fast as it did in MailSpring. So I like that. Now, if, as I said before, if I click uh, Control and One, it takes me to the interface that shows me all three accounts. If I do a control two, that takes me to my Gmail only account. If I do a control, hold the control key down, hit three on the keyboard, it brings up my iCloud account. And I believe since I've added another account, I'm just guessing now, but if I do a control four, yes, it brings up my charter.net account solely. All right, so I have now looking at nothing but my charter.net account and uh, as I said, this is my first email here. All right. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, and that was very easy to do, uh, let's go ahead and let's compose an email on the Charter account to my, um, let's say to my Proton Mail account. And let's see if we can access it. All right, so let's click that button right there for composing an email. And um, here it is. So let's do a Dan Calloway. At well, actually, let me just do iCloud, okay? iCloud account, and so it's a Dan Calloway at iCloud.com, and from Dan Callow or DL Calloway at Charter.net. Subject is test email from Charter account. Let's come down here, and now you can put a signature in here. I'm just not going to mess with that right now. And I will put in here, uh, this is t a test email from my charter account, charter.net account. Okay, and I'll just si sign it. And I'll go ahead, now I could do uh, send later, which means I could set a time for this to go out, which I really like this feature in MailSpring. So I could say later today or in an hour or two hours or this weekend or next week. And this weekend would be June the 5th at 9 a.m. All right. And uh, I'm assuming that my time zone is not set up properly here for this account. So it would, it's not 11, uh, account. well, I don't know. It says 9 a.m. or 9 p.m., 8 p.m. for tomorrow evening. Um, so that may be uh set up and configured within MailSpring, you'd need to change it. Um, and I, I haven't gotten to that yet in MailSpring. Kind of new to MailSpring as well. So, uh, the, you know, once you get it installed and get it set up, you can start researching some of these things on your own. I want to go ahead and send it now. And that uh, says that it's sending now or sending soon. And so it should be sent. And it may take a few seconds for that to come up. All right, so let's go out... It looks like the uh, test email has come in. If I click that button there, it reverts over to my iCloud account. And uh, it says here, test email from Charter account. And so if I click that, it says this is a test email from my Charter account, charter.net. And uh, so that worked. All right, so I was able to send an email out from my charter.net account to my uh, iCloud account. If I click on Write Reply... This is the signature I was referring to here, and I would need to set the signature up as well for this account for the charter.net, but I haven't done it yet. And so I'm just going to go ahead and say, uh, got your email. Thank you. All right. And let's go ahead and send that back. It says it's sending soon, counting, doing a countdown, and so it should... Uh, pop up here our notification in a moment 
letting me know that it uh, replied to my iCloud.com account. And I'll click on that. And there it goes. It sent that out. And I don't have a notification yet in my uh, iCloud account. Yeah, there it is. I'm sorry. I'm blind this morning. Uh, it says, got your email. Thank you. All right, so the email came in. That's why notification didn't come up. I was looking for that notification, but I don't need it because here it is. I'm in my iCloud.com account. All right, so uh, these accounts, by the way, are set up just like any other account with an inbox. You've got unread message folder. You've got, you know, start folder. You've got uh, snoozed reminders, sent junk archive, and that kind of stuff. All right, and so um, let's see, get reminded, I got it. All right, so so for unread, you've got for starred, if you had any starred messages, for snoozed, for any snooze mails, if you had any reminders set up, sent emails, there's your sent message folder, uh, junk email, if you've got any spam, and I do have one spam there, uh, so I can uh, delete that spam or empty the spam now by just hitting that button there, emptying my spam folder. Uh, I love this MailSpring account set up, by the way. Um, I think you'll like it as well. So let's let's look at, uh, let's go back to Control-4. So that's my um, Charter.net account. So I hit Control key on the keyboard and hit the 4 key uh, while holding down the Control key. That takes me to my Charter.net account. If I click on File, you can sync new mail now here. All right, so that brings in your mail. You can uh, click the new message under File, New Message to compose an email. You can click Add Account to add a new account. And uh, I believe you can add up to four accounts for free. Beyond that, I believe you need to pay for a subscription, and it is $8 a month. I don't need more than my three that I have here, actually. But if I have a fourth one, I'll add that one in. I can close this window here. I can quit the mail program altogether, MailSpring, if I want to do that. Under Edit here, I can do an Undo or Redo for the last actions. I can do a Copy, Cut, Paste, or Cut, a Copy, Paste, uh, Paste and Match Style for emails. If I want to copy something from one email to another, I can select all. I can uh, select all red or unread, select all starred or unstarred. I can mark as all as read. And so here I've got some unread messages so if I selected uh, select all uh, as red, then that reads all those messages, marks them as red, and uh, and that's a good thing to have as well, because uh, you could have hundreds or thousands of emails. Um, you can find information within a mailbox by hitting the find button, find in mailbox. Uh, here is a preferences section. So if you go out to preferences, this is a neat interface here as well. It's very comprehensive. I'm not going to go through all of this, um, but you can see under the general tab here, you can um, set up your default mail client uh, here to show Gmail style. My default uh, email client here in MailSpring is Gmail, so that's why it's pointing to show Gmail. Um, you can do, you know, things like uh, so default email behavior is to send mail, Default reply behaviors to reply all. And then after sending email, undo for five seconds. Um, for reading here, so this is using the mail or default mail client. This is for interfacing the language. This is for sending. This is for notifications. For reading the mail, you've got various tick boxes that you can select here. For composing mail, you've got a few under here. And for attachments, you can tell it to open uh, containing... Uh, folder after downloading the attachment uh, uncheck it here display the thumbnail previews for attachments when available for accounts you can select that it shows all of the accounts that you currently have set up so I've got a Gmail account as the default and uh, it should tell me that it is my default account and uh, it does and so here the iCloud account is well I can click on that it gives me my information about that I can set up automatic CC and BC if I want to. I can do an account color, uh, and I can change the, the color as well. Here I can do for my charter.net account. Um, 
it says that my account label is DL Callaway. I can change that and make that something else. I don't have to leave it as Dan dot Callaway at Gmail or Dan. You know, I could set this up and say it's Dan at iCloud um, because that's a just user friendly name. For subscription here, it's eight dollars a month, as I mentioned, uh, and you get all these other additional things that you can do uh, with your upgraded account. Uh, you can explore your MailSpring Pro, uh, read re read receipts, uh, link tracking, company overviews, rich contact profiles, mail templates, send later, and Stu's messages. Um, for appearance, here you can use the single pane. I'm using the two, pane, two panel or the single panel or pane. Um, single pane will give you, if you go back out here, uh, we'll just give you that single pane. All right, so let's go back out to Edit and Preferences again. I'm going to be on the two panel, and uh, and then there's the two panel panel vertical. I can change the theme and style here by clicking the Change Theme. Right now, I've got the dark theme as you notice, and I could, but I could set it on light theme if I wanted to, or I could set it on dark side or uh, Taiga Ubuntu. I could do that, and so if I go back out here, this is the Ubuntu theme. I don't particularly care for that, and so I'm going to go back and uh, I could have changed it from the change theme. There is a direct change theme button here, and so I want to go back out to dark, select that. All right, so here we go. I'm in my inbox again now for my charter.net account. Um, and then I can install a theme from outside if I want to, for, but let's go back to preferences. I've got shortcuts I can set up. I've got mail rules that I can set up. I'm not a big shortcuts guy, so I don't really mess with that other than the control one, two, and three, and four for my mail accounts. I can set up the various folders and work with those for the, each of these accounts. Okay. And for signatures, I can um, set up the default signature. It says, says now the default for two accounts. I have three accounts set up, as you recall. So I'm going to go ahead and tick the charter.net. All right, and so uh, now if I go back out to the inbox and go to my charter.net account, if I compose an email, it should have my signature down below, and it does, okay? So um, that is the default. Now, I could set this up for a generic so it didn't include gmail.com. I'll probably do that later, um, and that way it will work for any email account that I have set up. All right, let's go back out here. Um, for view, I can do read pain, reading pane off or on. All right, and horizontal viewing. If you want to do vertical reading pane, you can do that as well. I like the horizontal, but you can also go to inbox, go to starred, go to sent mail, go to drafts or all mail or enter full screen. For thread, uh, you can work with that. For uh, developer, I don't mess with that. For Windows, I can go to all accounts or I can go to an individual account. So I can come up here to Windows. If I want to go to my Gmail account, I can just click that, go out to my Gmail account, okay, very easily. And then for help, uh, you can get MailSpring help here by clicking this button. And uh, that brings up a help feature for, uh, you can search here for various things as well. And uh, if you go out to help, it should have taken me out to the web. And uh, here it is. And so it's MailSpring Community. Uh, this is the help feature that you have set up uh, via the interface that, uh, that I have here uh, for help. All right, so Getting Started Guide. You can get a Getting Started Guide. And so the Quick Start Guide here now is available. And so that you can walk through that, uh, setting up an email account or customizing your inbox view or exploring the advanced features, for instance, uh, digging deeper into your account, etc., etc. Let's go back out. And then um, last but not least, uh, well, MailSpring Community. Let's go there. So let's go back out to the web. And so here's the community. And so the, I may have shown you this earlier. Uh, I did, I believe, when I was look, talking about voting. But you've got all this information you can go to here for community help as well. All right. And I highly recommend that you uh, take a look at that. 
Let's go back out to MailSpring now. And I believe the last thing I need to show you is viewing the license. And so if you take a look at the license itself, um, not sure what that brought up. Uh, it didn't bring up a license that I saw. That's okay. Um, but if I close this interface right, altogether and get out of my MailSpring account, notice it leaves a uh, terminate stay resident icon here on the panel. And what that means, it's running in memory. And so in order to bring up uh, my MailSpring account once again, I can come over here to the panel. I can click or left click. I can open the inbox. I can create a new message here. I can open up the preferences. And if I click quit message MailSpring, that will shut this down as well and completely take me out of the MailSpring uh, interface. Let's go up to open inbox. And that opens up the last inbox that was open. Actually, it opens up the default, sorry, opens up the default account, which is dan.calloway at gmail.com. allows me to get in and uh, select, a, a you know, this particular interface. Now, if I had it closed again and I wanted to just bring up a message, to start composing a new message, rather, I could left click and say new message. And that's just going to bring up the new message window without opening the uh, MailSpring account in the background and it is on the default but I can change that to my iCloud or my charter.net account compose that message and uh, send it out without ever opening up the actual MailSpring interface okay so this has been a quick look at MailSpring currently in version 1.9.1 highly recommend that you take a look at that and um, and um, Install it in your Linux distro, install it in Windows or Mac OS. Although I didn't cover Windows or Mac OS, I did look at Snap Package installation in Linux. And so uh, go ahead and take a look at that. I think you'll like MailSpring if you start using it. I know I did, and I'm hooked on it. All right, so this has been uh, Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up on the video. That helps my channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, in the pop-up that comes up at the end of the video. I will put a link to all of the things I talked about that you need to link out to. I'll put that down below the video here. And so again, this is Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.